this must be a very good coat indeed. So after a brilliant two-year-old campaign, Mill Reef went on to be the exceptional three-year-old that Connections hoped he would become, winning the Epsom Derby and going on to finish his season as the ARC winner at Longchamp. He was kept in training as a four-year-old, but that year things didn't exactly go to plan. What are your memories from that incident on the, on the gallops where he shattered that cannon bow? Um, it was just the most awful moment of my whole life, I think because um, I was standing watching him and uh, moving, I thought, beautifully, and suddenly he sort of collapsed, you know. Mm. And uh, it was just disastrous. It was just the most awful moment. And um, But the, the wonderful thing is that what then was modern science, and it, it's progressed even more since then, yes. He had the most unbelievable operation performed on him by a genius here, and he got to have that career at stud. And what a genius it was, the, the doctor that operated on him. Jim Roberts was the most amazing um, veterinary surgeon I've ever come across. Just an amazing man. And uh, the whole operation was brilliant. I was there for every moment of it. And it was seven hours. Um, he operated on him and he went and developed x-rays halfway through it and so he could see exactly what he was doing. Where, where, did, where was the operation? It was in the colour room um, where we have all the colours now and it was a gymnasium originally. Mm. Um, and do you remember what a, what a story it was developing at the time? The Great Mill Reef, he has such a, an incident on the a, a gallops, such a disastrous incident on the gallops. But then this life-saving operation is performed yes. to, to save his leg. He then goes in a cast from shoulder right the way down. Can you remember how long he was in that for? I can't remember how long. Um, the operation, I've just never had so much admiration for a person as I had for Jim Roberts. What, what he did to, to, to really absolutely, groundbreaking absolutely stuff at the time. Absolutely amazing. And then I can remember... Clearly, he said, now walk him lots, you know, when he came out of plaster. And uh, we, we walked him and he became, as I say, the best three-legged walker you've ever seen. <laughs> he was just, he'd walk around 100 miles an hour on three legs. And I eventually rang Jim Roberts and I said, look, we just can't get him to put this leg to the ground. And uh, he came down he said, right, get me a... Um, get me a, a, a pole, a, a, a broom handle. And uh, so we found a broom and he cut this thing exactly the right length and then he cut the bits of rope on and attached them either end. So, and he attached it from his near fore to his off hind so that he had to move his near fore forward and suddenly he started walking. He had no option, but he'd fall down if he mm. didn't. And um, within days, he was walking perfectly. What sense, that, the, the sense of relief that he was, he was okay, he could go on and have a, a career at stud, the, his, his legacy kept on, must have been huge for you and the whole team here. Yes, it was. Uh, I mean, we didn't know at that stage that he'd be okay to stand as mm. a stallion. Um, but it, it soon became obvious that he was walking so well, he'd be f okay. The vet said he'd be okay to cover. And um, happily had the two best grooms I've ever come across who looked after him. That was John Hallam who looked after him with us and George Roth, who was this wonderful stallion man at the National Stud who looked after him at Newmarket. And um, they were just the two best horsemen I think I've ever come across. And wonderful, as well, because it doesn't always happen with these champions, yes. that he went on to be such a, well, the stallion that he was, yes. producing yes. derby winners. I know you trained some excellent horses, Glint of Gold and the like, for, yes. for Paul in those colours. He didn't become the great stallion, I don't suppose, that everyone had hoped he might be. He sighed. Two, two or three Derby winners, you know, so 
he, he was certainly a success, but um, he wasn't the, the great success that he'd been as a racehorse, probably, as a stallion. Was there one race that you wouldn't have given up over any? A horse that won a King George, that won an Eclipse, that won a, a Derby, that won an Arc, and the, and the two-year-old races he won? Is there one race that, that was the one for you? I think the Jim Crack, probably because I didn't want to run. Mm. And uh, thank God Paul Mellon was there, you know, and just made the decision. He said, I just have this funny feeling that everything will be all right and that we should run. And I just couldn't believe it. He went through the ground that day, which was as soft as any ground I've ever raced a horse on. Um, he just went through it like it was firm ground. It was extraordinary. And I think it just went further and further in front, you know. It, when we look back on the, these, or this horse in particular, and these real champions going back through the years, it does take a lot to happen at, this, at, at the right time, doesn't it? The, the people coming together, yourself, yes. Jeff, Paul coming together with a great horse at the right time, Jeff who rode him, I think, on, on every start, for example. To, these, these are some it incredible is, people. Yes, yes. Well, I don't know if we were all incredible people, but uh, we were just lucky to have this incredible horse.